I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. The red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fangs, claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they can be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. We're uh, back. We are back. And in the time that we've been gone, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet came out. There's a lot's happened. I uh, yes. I apol. I we I couldn't last time. The baby was sick. We didn't get back home until like seven o'clock uh, in the morning. And I mean, that's more important. And we're be- we're be- well. I, it was so I was so so sleepy from staying uh, baby, there. But baby, baby Trumps. Ba- baby be better. Um, two things happen. It's I'm torn because it turns out when we miss an episode, either. Pokemon comes out, or Kanye does a thing, and I'm putting both of those on us. Uh, those there's so I don't I don't know. Is, is I it, I don't want I don't want Kanye on my conscience. Just as like I'm just saying coincidence. I don't know. So I saw a post uh, that was made by like a fake George Bush account. I saw that. <laughs> it was like Kanye doesn't like black people yeah. <laughs> or no Kanye doesn't care about black people because uh-huh. <laughs> Kanye back during like it was during uh, Hurricane Katrina he was yeah. like uh, Bush doesn't like black people probably true but yeah. also Kanye doesn't either <laughs> uh. oh it's coming off John is disrobing for those listening and we're back yeah uh, that's that's some OnlyFans content right there oh yeah uh, I had a thought stomach. Does OnlyFans require video content, or can you do audio content? Um, you can do audio content. I also OnlyFans. You don't have to do pornographic content. Well, I'm just saying we could have like the Patreon and also like a Cryptopedia OnlyFans, where it's just also the Patreon. But I feel like that's. (laughs) I feel like that is just going to backfire horribly somehow. Yeah, it's also going to make me have to do more work. That's fair. And I'm going to definitely miss. I'm going to miss. <laughs> it will happen. I was actually trying... I was thinking about putting um, zipped folders of all of the, like, episodes of the podcast with, like, individual, uh-huh. like... um, Like, all of the metadata was right. And then I tried to upload it to... Um, to pay, I almost said OnlyFans. I tried to upload it to Patreon, <laughs> uh-huh. um, and Patreon was like, "No, this is too fucking big. What are you doing?" And I was like, "All right, well, I guess I'm not going to do that one." Oh, <laughs> so that's yeah. why. Yeah. The um, uh, but in terms of like um, Pokemon. Well, what do we do? We want to talk about Kanye, or do we want to talk about Pokemon? I don't know if we should Pokemon. talk about Kanye po- in depth Pokemon. because can, also, oh. do, okay. I do want to say one thing about the Kanye thing. The Yahoo thing was pretty funny. I don't know what the Yahoo thing is. He brought a bottle of Yahoo on and turned it into a prop. Yoohoo? Sorry, Yoohoo on and turned it into yeah. a prop. And um, I find it funny because I know that Yoohoo... Did they make a response? I don't know if they made a response, but that feels like the kind of thing where there has to be a corporate response to like Kanye using Yoohoo as a prop during his whole thing. Oh, God. Um... So actually, I lied. There's two things I want to talk about. Uh, First, why the fuck was Kanye in like one of in a black green man suit? Um, um, I don't know. Did he like? Did he really think that? Did he think that like people wouldn't notice him by his voice? There's so the you, thing that he's literally famous for. You made a very good point in the Discord. Like he's famous. Your career is based on your voice. How do you do you think that's doing anything? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was. It, uh, so, and then the second thing I want to point out, for some reason, InfoWars decided to play the curb stomp scene from American History X while Kanye was talking. Did they? Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. There's choices I, being made. I, I, I think it was at least, it might have been somebody adding it after the fact, but like, it was a choice. Yeah. It was certainly a choice. Um... Now that I'm thinking about it, it might have been somebody adding it after the fact. I'm not sure. 
It was the one that got shared a lot, so maybe I should check Snopes on that. Honestly, I don't care enough. No. <laughs> Too much um, effort. Yeah, but but uh, Kanye is not well. No, well, he's been like that for a long time. <laughs> didn't, didn't, uh, aren't, aren't like Yeezys no longer being called Yeezys? Well, the Adidas dropped Kanye, which very yeah. late, by the way, because he's been saying this for, yeah. for he, he like a long time ago was like slavery was a choice. And like he, so he's never been a good like that and probably should have lost sponsorships a long yeah, probably. time ago. Probably. I think now it's just the um, the platform uh, uh, was larger. Well, once you start, once you start, like, once you start interneting it, and like, yeah, the bad, the worst parts of 4chaning it, um, you should really lose sponsorships at that point. <laughs> yeah. Um. Anywho, uh, anyway, Pokemon. To some, yeah, so Pokemon, another disaster. Uh, oh. It's a fun game, but it is a disaster it's of a, a game. It's a fun game with a lot of poor choices. Yeah, like, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I put... I would actually. I would still recommend all the people play it, even with I my opinions. A, let, me, let me put in... Let me tell you how many hours I put into this. And I'm going to be sad. sad. Oh. Yeah, all right. Let me just do a quick save. Okay, I don't know if you can hear this on the podcast, but I am in the game right now. Let me open up the map. Why is my X not working? X button. Profile. <laughs> God. All right, what's the first 69 number? 69 hours. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm 69 hours into the game. Um, So clearly I enjoyed it enough to keep playing, but... Yeah. uh. It has some issues, to say the least. The it, um the way that it handles lo LOD is worse than the way I handled LOD on school projects a decade ago. So it, it does it so bad. We were just talking. I thought it was a hardware issue. Yeah. No. No. It's, and it's, it's not because, apparently. Yeah, they did things bad. <laughs> is what they did. Um. It's actually kind of fresh. The worst part about it is like how Pokemon will just like pop in as you're running and they'll suddenly appear on uh, top of you yeah. as you're running on uh Miraidon or Coridon, depending on which yeah. version you have. Well, especially when you're sprinting, it's just out mm -hmm. of just I don't know. You have to be on like high alert to dodge to so you where you're trying to go. <laughs> honestly, I've I've adopted a new technique, which is sprint jump glide sprint yep. jump glide yep so i don't accidentally run into to like surface level pokemon yeah well even um, when you're gliding it's worth because if you jump from a high s surface and then you drop after a while that drop they'll pop in fa later than if you were sprinting and you just land on top of a guy like come on fair um still a fun game I though. Do have to yeah it is yeah. and they have some actually pretty like fun uh, Pokemon. Uh, I I saw some people really complaining about it because like Flamigo is literally just a flamingo without the N, which is fair. I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's it's fair, it's fair. But like, I have a uh, Houndstone. I think Houndstone's uh -huh. cool. He's got the little doggy skeleton bones and shit. And then um, there's just Godzilla as yep. one of them. I love my Goldago. Uh, the, uh, yeah the the uh the weed smoking gold man. The weed smoking gold man who is completely immune to all uh, uh, status effects. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Unless you're in a, a terror raid and then the the terrorcellized thing comes up and you don't have an ability shield, and then you're like, "Why the fuck is my why the fuck is my golden go getting a burn?" Does that happen to me? I don't do any raids. Yeah, I I, yeah. I I ignore all of the game except for like old style like i just do the gyms and the titans and the the team star bases okay so who's your favorite gym leader um of the ones you've met i think you've done them all i've right? done i've done them all i like okay. the water gym that was fun um the, the old man yeah where you have to go and get like the special uh cooking ingredients and let me let me let me amend that what is your favorite design for a gym leader and like personality 
Um, to be honest, I don't, I don't, I just skip all the text. What? I don't, I don't care about their backstory. Oh no. <laughs> My favorite's Larry. I, 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 that's the, the thing. The normal type. <clears throat> oh okay. yes that was a fun one that was He's a fun my one. favorite larry is my absolute favorite the every the every man larry he, he I, was fun he that was a fun I, one. I understand larry on a spiritual level that i can't really quite articulate the i appreciate that they tried doing something different for the lead up to the gym i kind of miss solving like the puzzles and bouncing around to like the old games so the one thing that I really dislike about the new gyms, um, and we're we have a very we have a lot of content, so I'm not going to we're gonna cut off of Pokemon in a second. Oh yeah, and I've um, got one thing and we can dive in. Yeah. So uh the thing that I don't like the most about the gyms is uh, they all look the same. They're all identical. They're all like an identical building. I mean, arguably the town is the gym now, but still I miss the old like interesting buildings but yeah and that's their, just um, me their challenges are hit and miss for me though larry was kind of fun the uh water gym was kind of fun the psychic gym was unbearable uh like they oh the my the weirdest one though is the olives i oh, had to go and collect gym. yeah i, I had, fun, you had to like, like push giant olives into a basket oh the bug gym yeah yeah the first gym you go to yeah, not grass. Yeah, but yeah. well, it can be the first gym you go to. Yeah, the uh, anywho. Yeah, I liked the one where you had to collect all the little sprig guys and like they'd follow you around. That was fun. Uh, Sunflora. Yes. So, Brandon, what was the other thing you had? Because we oh, have a very we have I a know. lot of content. To I get was through. like, Jesus, twenty eight pages. Um, I have a beard update because it takes a year to get in and see a fucking specialist. Um, mm -hmm. so my assumption from internet was baby but baby i was stealing the beard baby stole the beard but there's an update baby didn't steal the beard i went to the beard guy and um let so i go in there there it's like a big fancy specialist they take a couple little snippy snips put it on a microscope slide leave the room mm -hmm. comes back in with four other people and a textbook and then, right? Yeah, that's the last shit I was expecting. I thought he was going to come back and start to... But no, he takes a little sample of the beard, comes back with four other people in a textbook, and then flips through oh, the pages. No. Then he's showing me, and they're talking about things I can't pronounce. And uh, I've got a, a beard abnormality. There you go. But apparently it's the kind of abnormality that warrants other four other people, in the and then they leave. And the nurse comes in to do the... Uh, the paperwork nurse walks out. There's a little knock on the door. Just other people who work there were like, hey, we heard about the thing. Can we take a look? And I'm like, I guess. Sure. So whatever I have is apparently a beard abnormality. Interesting enough to bring four other people a textbook. They leave and then just random people who work there be like, hey, can we check that shit out? I was about to make a joke, Brandon, that it was like the reason they brought the textbook was because it wasn't in the textbook and they were going to like <laughs> leave and be like, look, it's just not here. Like, no, no it was nowhere. in there. It was in there. I can't pronounce it, but I was like, that's, it's never so like, I didn't know what was going on. If it was a movie, I'd be like, well, clearly I have a wasting disease. So, you know, I'm jokingly thinking that in my head. And then they come back and like that's the, not comforting for the but it's fine it's whatever it's fine but I was like it's God a beard damn. wasting disease it's a beard waste kinda it's the beard sumption <laughs> it is the beard sumption the beard sumption also it turns out my beard's not curly even though it looks very curly that's also like another abnormality to the actual like structure of the hairs so they're not natural curls they're anomalous curls. Uh, I'd say they're natural just because they exist in nature, but I understand what you mean. Yeah, like, under a microscope, they, like, they're not curls. They're, like, helical, like a DNA strand, when that's not what they're supposed to do. <laughs> that's interesting. And then that that's... And then there's another thing that makes them have started doing the thing that makes them get shorter. <laughs> but I was like, damn! You know, you know what's not an abnormality? What's that? This week's episode. Oh, gosh. Yep. So, 
I can't really give this episode an introduction because it's not like it's not something you can really give an introduction to. Um, and if you're listening to my voice right now, our voices, uh, even actually, Brandon, you are too. You're now existing in the domain of this week's entity. We are. Um, it's you, weird. There seems to be a tone shift. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What do you mean a tone shift? Oh, like we went from jokey jokey to like, oh God. <laughs> yeah. Um. So you definitely heard of it. I, I was going to say probably, I have probably in the, the script here, but Everyone's you know what? No, you've heard of this. You've heard of this. Um, whether it be an image board post, ARG, video game, schoolyard rumor, or a real life moral panic that did in fact happen, which yeah. is still the most baffling part of this whole story to me. Um, so if you're uh, if you're watching the podcast, if you're listening to the podcast, you know what the episode title is. I'm not going to say it yet because I'm just going to read what uh, I'm going to read the first appearance of this creature, um, and then we're going to go from there, right? Yeah. So. The following post was made by a something awful form user, Victor Surge. I um, just watched a video about something awful yesterday about swap.avi, yeah. so I learned something. Yeah, swap. Uh, wait, swap.avi. Which one was that? That was produced by the same guy that produced Two Girls One Cup, and it's ah. a classroom, and then they poop into each other's butts. Okay, gotcha, gotcha, uh -huh. gotcha. Um, something awful. I'll, I'll talk about something awful in a second. It's an interesting website. Um, <laughs> so Victor Surge, whose real name is Eric Knudsen, uh, for those of you who are wondering, this does come into the story later, um, had made a post on June 10th, 2009, which Brandon, for reference, uh -huh. is 17 days before you and I walked for high school graduation. Yes. <laughs> I did the. I checked it out. I looked. You, at the, you the did dates. the math. <laughs> I did the math. Um, so the post in question had two photographs accompanied by um, two posts accompanied by two black and white photograph photographs that you've almost definitely seen, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, Brandon, have you ever seen this first post picture? Uh, I've not. I've only seen the second picture actually. You've seen the second one? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, the first one. I, I'm everything in here is in order of its appearance, roughly. Okay. Um, so that's the first picture of today's entity that was ever seen. And it had the following caption. We didn't want to go. We didn't want to kill them. But it's persistent silence and outstretched arms horrified and comforted us at the same time. 1983, photographer unknown, presumed dead. Can you just give me a very brief description of that picture? Yeah, it looks like, um, late 80s school children walking down a beach. And that's it. There's the thing in the background that you don't really notice unless you know you're supposed to be looking for a thing in the background, which mm -hmm. really more or less looks like um, just a white splotch. It, it's not it super defined. It kind of looks like a dude giving a thumbs up. Yeah. Like a little it, bit. What's the um, what's the word for like human doing pattern recognition thing? Uh, it's pareidolia. Yeah, but pareidolia. not in this case. Not in this Somebody case, actually put something in there, but yes, it's, yes, it's, it's very pareidolia. It's undefined enough where, like, I, I, I mm -hmm. it, it kind of warrant. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if pareidolia came into a, a play. I mean, it's it it. So the post that this is in talked about stuff like that quite extensively, but like the form that it was in, yeah. the form posting. But we'll get to that in a second. Um. So the second photo had the following caption. One of two recovered photographs from the Sterling City Library blaze, notable for being taken the day which 14 children vanished and for what's referred to as the Slender Man. Deformities cited as film defects by officials. Fire at library occurred one week later. Actual photograph confiscated as evidence. 1986, photographer Mary Thomas, missing since June 13th, 1986. So yeah, this week's episode's the Slender Man because apparently enough they're okay. We're going to get into this. But as far as I can tell, the only people who actually believe in Slenderman as a real credible entity are strangely adults. What? Oh, God. No. Yeah. We'll get uh. into that. But it's a fucking baffling story. Um, so in this particular picture, it's a picture of a girl on like a, 
uh, a ladder, a slide, a slide like a ladder, ladder for a yeah. slide, like a metal, like one of the metal ones that was fun. Um, the metal ones that was fun unless you were in shorts in the summer. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, there is like a little watermark in the upper right hand corner that says City of Sterling Libraries Local Studies Collection, which is a bit confusing because if you look at the time frame for this photo and like when it was photo photographed and when everything happened, like why would there be a watermark there? But whatever. Um, then in the background, you can see a tall man who appears to have tentacles coming out of one of his arms. Um, which is the presumed Slender Man, which as we know now, like based on like the way things look and uh, the, the general body of work that's ar risen around the Slender Man, that that's the Slender Man, right? Um, now, um, I've, I've kind of belabored the point, but if it's not entirely obvious, these are the, the, this post in the two photos are the definitive origin of the boogeyman internet boogeyman slender man it's it's like, one of the ones where we know the origin like this is this is, is the not, thing it is not in question we have literally no doubts that this is the first occurrence of the slender man and i know people out there are going there there's pop, possibly people out there who are going to be like oh no but like slender man existed before this cuz he was like the tall man or like the dark man or blah, 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 blah. We're going to get into that. This is the first time Slender Man ever actually appears. Mm -hmm. That's it. There's nothing else to it. Okay. That's it. I, I <laughs> cannot stress enough. This is where Slender Man came from. Slender Man didn't exist before this. <laughs> no matter what anyone says, Slender Man did not exist before this. <laughs> now, um, because this was 2009, um, I was moving around those parts, the parts of the internet that Slender Man occurred, uh -huh. like kind of was born into. Um, and I actually vaguely remember seeing Slender Man in the summer of 2009. Um, it was a little spooky. Like, I mean, it's an unsettling picture if you're yeah. in the mood and it's like a late night, right? Um, and usually I saw this on the X board, right? So X is paranor the paranormal board of 4chan. Mm -hmm. Well, especially if you've already been like, scrolling around for a couple hours checking out creepy stuff and you're already primed yeah. to be like spooky yeah i mean that's kind of the, that was the fun of the the paranormal the paranormal conspiracy boards on the internet back yeah. before conspiracies got really really bad <laughs> <laughs> um was it like it was kind of like this like state that you could enter into where you're just like in this uh like alternate reality where the where things are scary like shadow yeah. people and like all that fun stuff. I remember distinctly um, when the summer that this came out, uh, One Man Hide and Seek was super popular in the Midnight Man game. Oh, they were both very yeah. Popular. Yeah. You remember? Because, like, the One Night, uh, One Man Hide and Seek involved, like, filling a doll with rice, some blood, and, like, putting it in a tub or some shit. And then, like, you were chased by the doll, supposedly. And then the Midnight Man game, uh, was baffling because you had to knock like 12 times and the last knock had to be explicit, like specifically on the stroke of midnight or some bullshit. Yeah. And then it lasts until like three thirty six or something like that. Uh huh. So, um, it was, it was an interesting period of the internet, uh, where people were messing with people, but like it hadn't quite, like there were a few pockets of things like reaching into the real world and doing some serious damage, but like, yeah. Overall, it was less terrible, right? Um, there's some yeah. particularly there's some particularly bad ones that I can think of, like um, uh, the 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 like dad who was yelling about the kids who were um, uh, terror the 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 internet people who were terrorizing that one kid who uh, was it my bloody Valentine? What is it? I don't know if I know so, this okay. One. There's okay, okay, okay. Um, this is this is a bit of internet lore that uh, is the name of the band, My Bloody Valentine. That's a band, yeah. Yeah, with a really shitty dude, if my memory is correct. Uh, probably. No, what what was? Oh shit! Uh, 
but, 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 but uh, regardless, I, I'm not going to go into it because there was a, so there's a, there's an episode of, uh, someplace underneath that goes into it in a lot of depth. Uh-huh. I'll find the episode in a second. Um, but regardless, uh, I like legitimately, I saw it and I was just like, oh, hey, it's another creepy thing. Cause like by uh-huh. this point, I don't know if you remember it, but the rake had already like come and gone. Uh huh. Do you know what the rake is, Brandon? Uh, yeah, that's the, the, cre- oh, that's another, uh, creepy pasta. It's like the Hound of, it's like the, it's a creepy pasta that's basically just the Hound of Tindalos from, uh, HP Lovecraft that they yeah. just reskinned. Like, that, that's all it is. It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's spooky because the existing thing was spooky, right? Not yeah. like, not because it's like something groundbreaking or earth shattering, but just because, like, it started out as something spooky. Mm-hmm. Um, Anywho, so in terms of uh, stepping back a little bit uh, away from like this this up close lens, mm-hmm. um, if you weren't enmeshed on the internet uh, message board culture of the late aughts, something awful is like one of the more important boards that existed. Yeah, I don't think I really um, ever hung out there too long. No, well, there's yeah. a reason you didn't, right? Um, basically, basically, the the problem is that um, it it you had to pay to be a member, right? Oh, uh, okay. So, something awful is a comedy website featuring blog posts, forums, and reviews uh, that have internet influenced internet culture. Less recently, obviously, since 1999, when Low Tax launched it. Low Tax being the person who created it. Um, he died recently, I think. Uh, terrifyingly, though, mm-hmm. you can pretty much trace the current mess that is the uh, internet. Um, he can track so much back to something yeah, awful. So much. Yes. <laughs> something awful is upsettingly responsible for a lot of our problems. If you like, <laughs> like really not good. Not good. Um, so, uh, like for example, and this is very important for Chan. Uh, huh. Four <laughs> Chan started, uh, on, because of something awful. Um, so the reasoning that it uh-huh. happened uh, was because hentai was banned on something awful by low tax. So is that, Mo- uh, that is literally why 4chan came into existence. They're all born Blood from on the porn. dance floor. Uh, Blood on the dance floor. That was the, um, that was the, the band that did a shitty thing. Mm. Cause, um, uh, Jesus Torres, who is like Davi vanity is his stage name. Yeah. Um, he did a lot of sexual abuse of minors. So, oh, yeah, and Jesse Slaughter, Jesse Slaughter, that was the name of the person, um, who's now known as Damien Leonhart. Uh, Jesse Slaughter was like abused relentlessly by the internet. Um, <laughs> that took me way too long to go because keep in mind that was two paragraphs, and I vamped uh-huh. to find that like small <laughs> detail. Um, so regardless, uh, regardless of the significance, I personally was not a lur- lurker or con- contributor, um, because it was 10 bucks yeah. to join the forums and I was not going to spend $10 when I can get the same on dig or, or 4chan for free. Yeah, exactly. Just oh, simple dig. Simple fact. Oh, dig. Yeah, dig. Um, so jumping forward a little bit, uh, back on to, well, jumping back a little bit, actually, to June 8th, 2009, user... Jero Jerry Gigage created a form <laughs> post titled Create Paranormal Images. The content of the initial post was as follows. Creating paranormal images has been a hobby of mine for quite some time. Occasionally, I stumble upon odd websites showcasing strange photos, and I always wondered if it were possible to get one of my own chop my own chops, which is uh something awful slang for show photoshops, in a book, documentary, or website, just by casually leaking it out onto the web whether they'd be supplements to bogus stories or not. So, let's make a shitload. Pro tip one, 
Before I export, I open my levels panel and slide my back blacks and white inward to lose true whites and true blacks. Makes it look more legit, no? Try exporting your image. Pro tip two, try exporting your image into very low JPEG quality first and see if it works with the image, as well as hide minor, minor flaws. After all, it can add to the effect. You don't have to post source images unless you want to, of course. Um, now, baffling, bafflingly, Brandon, uh -huh. and I don't know how this happened, whenever people talk about Slenderman, yeah. uh, they, they call the post a contest. Um, when challenge would be way more appropriate, because like yeah. there were Photoshop contests on the internet, but this was not a contest. This was a challenge. No, it's just for um, fun. Yeah. So regardless, through this post, the seed was sown for this week's internet boogeyman. Um, it's interesting to read through the thread because at no point in the inception of Slenderman did literally anyone consider this to be factual. Every person on the thread was in on it. There was like nobody who wasn't in on it because. Yeah. Once again, well, this everyone is people knew who were the paint. origin. Everyone knew the origin. And they're everyone all in knew on it. that this everyone knew that this was a thread to make a fake fictional character. Yeah. Right? Like it's a thing. Um now, I hesitate to say that they were hoaxing though because they were all in on a form of play, right? None yeah. of them were it was play. It wasn't it wasn't hoaxing necessarily. Right. No. Um, there is this. There is a light degree of desire for hoaxing, but like they're not going out of their way to hoax it. They're just kind of pushing it into the internet. Yeah. So like, hey, let's all see what we can do to make these cool, you know, paranormal yeah. images. Um, like the initial post does have some vibes of hoaxing, but nobody, mm -hmm. nobody was really posting like in serious. Yeah. Um, honestly, I'd call this more of a LARP. Uh, which is a modern descriptor for internet yes anding. Yeah. Um, so uh, it only took a few hours for people to respond to the introductory post, um, but the reception was immediately positive to Slenderman. Uh, one form member expressed shock at the looming figure of Slenderman in the background. Instantly, however, people decided to do things to flesh out uh, what the Slenderman was. From form user uh, Beer Deer, uh, they posted the following. As an amateur paranormal investigator, you'd be surprised how much Slenderman has appeared in photos, pictures of the times of disaster during that historical period. In parentheses, aka, I'd like to see more of those. Yeah. So he's he's already like this dude is already like enhancing um the the like story. Yeah. Right. But like he also is fully aware of what's happening. Right. Yeah. Um. And I do want to take a second to stop because I forgot to mention my sources for this week. Uh, Slender Man is Coming, Creepypasta and Contemporary Legends on the Internet by uh, Trevor Blank, uh, Lynn McNeil, and a few other people. It's an actual, like, journal. on Like, it's a bunch of journal articles on mm -hmm. Slender Man that was composed into a book. And then uh, the second one that I read that is going to be... And I honestly think that we might have to d divide this episode into two episodes, Brandon, because there's just so much fucking content. That's fair. This it's twenty. Um, this is three, almost three times as the length of like a normal copy. To be fair, there are a lot of pictures. True, but um, true. The second, the second book that I read was the Slender Man Mysteries: Internet Legend, Urban Legend Came to Life, uh, by R Nick Redfern. Now I'm gonna say one thing. Uh -huh. One of those books, super duper credible. The other one. Talks about tulpas for a while. Oh, wow. Oh, um, no. <clears throat> oh, no. Oh. <laughs> so, Victor Surge re replied while still, like, kind of in the LARP. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll do some re more research. I've heard that there may be a couple more legit Slender Man photographs out there. I'll post them if I find them. Now, at this point, I'm going to talk about some concepts that were introduced by the first of those two sources, the actual um, academic source. Uh -huh. um, which is Slender Man is Coming, Creepypasta, and Contemporary Legends on the Internet. Uh, so it's super recommended by me. Uh, it's super dense, though. And if you're not used to reading academic articles, um, it might be a little tricky to read just because academia writes in a very specific way and yada, yada, yada. Um, now, I want to return to the form posts and I want to highlight that there's a type of play in practice, which... If you know what my what I what I do, I am a researcher who does research on play, basically. Um, 
So uh, together, the participants in the discussion engage in a disruptive type of play that toys with emotions and upsets one's perception of the world. Roger Callow uh, calls this ilnix, the Greek word for whirlpool. In lay terms, people are deliberately trying to get a rise out of each other or themselves. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's shit posting. Yeah. That is that is what's happening. Um, importantly, at this point in the history of Slenderman, there is no cohesive narrative or legend, right? Uh, there are three quote unquote facts about the entity. He is tall, featureless, in a dark suit with tentacle like limbs. He interacts with children, abducting them or forcing them to kill by some means. And he appears in the background of photographs, just out of clear focus. Those are the three things we know about him. Basically, just one more thing more than than Sasquatch. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So, basically, the short posts are hinting at a narrative, despite the fact that they're two wholly discreet authors talking about a creature that has just been introduced into the zeitgeist. Jeffrey Tolbert calls this behavior reverse ostention, which is... So I'm going to explain what ostension is. Uh huh. Um, ostension is basically the execution of a broader narrative uh, as okay. people engage with a myth or a legend, right? So legend yeah. tripping, that's an ostension. Uh-huh. Uh, going to going to like a haunted house, like a legitimate, like a quote unquote legitimate haunted house and ghost yeah. hunting, ostension. Telling a story, ostension, right? Based on a based on an urban legend or something. Those are all mm-hmm. ostensions, right? In this particular case, there was no like story or like like canon that they were basing these stories off of. So they were creating the canon by telling the the fake stories. Yeah. So hence reverse ostension. It's it's interesting and extremely complicated, and that's me boiling it down to like the simplest terms possible. Yeah. Um because on June 10th, there was no lore for, for Slenderman. No mythos, no established parameters. Here, the posters were building the appearance of a broader legend where none existed by pretending it existed. Now, I think this is... Per- personally, I think this is how cryptids come into existence in general. Um, but yeah. Slenderman is explicitly unique because we saw the exact process by which Slenderman gained his attributes. Full stop. That's, that's just literally all there is to it. We yeah. watched it happen. Which is kind of cool and unique for um, the Slenderman because you, you, we can assume that this is how a lot of them may happen, but it's cool to actually have like the receipts to, and the timeline to actually watch it happen. Um, I mean, r- realistically speaking, the Chupacabra is not is so okay. The thing is, like, it's it's complicated because the Chupacabra is not a reverse ascension, right? For mm-hmm. example. It was an explanation for behaviors for something that happened in the real world, right? So that would be that would just be an ascension, right? Basically, if you're thinking about it in anime terms, the first so the first <laughs> Ghost in the Shell series, uh-huh. the Laughing Man complex or whatever, um, the standalone complex, a reverse ascension is basically a standalone complex. Um, in that the thing never existed, but people created a thing that never existed. <laughs> I'd love for you to teach like a 102 level course where like that forces the 101 level professor to like make kids watch a bunch of anime. Otherwise, they won't understand how to digest the source material. So now we're going to be talking. We're going to be talking about... Uh, uh, that that slime anime. Yeah. Um, your your homework for tonight is to finish all of. I got reincarnated as a slime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that and um, you're also going to have to watch uh, episode three of Kill a Kill. Episode three of Kill a know, Kill. Episode. I don't know 10 what's in it. You just have girl. to watch it. You just have to watch it. There, I don't know what's in it. You have to watch it. I'm just naming a random episode. This is your homework. Good luck. <laughs> so, <laughs> it moves from here, Brandon. Um, Victor Surge continues to post. On June 11th, 2009, um, he makes the following post. 5 And uh, there's two stars... Which I don't know what those stars mean. Uh, I think they were just in the original post and I copied it over. Uh, 1994, Wilkes Estate. 
One subject reported nothing out of the ordinary before taking photograph. Lower stairs area was said to be very dark. Subject states that after the camera flash, she heard a sound like a watermelon being unable to understand, being, and then in uh, asterisks, be uh, unable to understand the subject, as in like they, the, there was like garbling of some kind. Okay. Um, 52593. Subject unable to recall events after man- inner power failure. Unable to ca- question other two identified subjects. Camera and film acquired from Gloria Creedy, current residents of Woodview Mental Hospital and Psychological Rehabilitation Clinic. Film mostly uncontaminated despite massive blood and human tissue present on camera. Hmm. No positive ID on anomalous, tall, and slender subject. Facial blur caused by possible contamination. Um, 6793. Early digital analysis indicates tall subjects may have no eyes, anomalies previously thought to be film errors, and flash artifacts now thought to be appendages. 61093. Final identified subject reported missing, along with other 33 patients and staff of Woodview Mental Hospital and Psychological Rehabilitation Clinic, South Wing. 61893. Further inquiry to cease immediately. See report number 3392. Right? Yeah. Um... So, uh, following that, there was an additional two photos that uh, that Victor Surge uploaded that had no context. There is a picture of well, you describe describe those the first po- uh Yeah, the first one is a, a picture of a mirror, and in the reflection, you see a staircase and um, a guy with wiggly woo fingers, and um, presumably the camera also captured in the lower right hand corner. Uh, some kind of tentacle um, coming to oh, yeah, yeah. maybe wrap around the subject. This one's very, very much the style of like a 2000s Photoshop. Mm-hmm. Um, if you 100%. Can d- identify him. And then the, the lower picture is somewhat a silhouette peering through. Um, what are those blinds called? The kind of blinds where you can like pull them. Venetian. The, yeah, the Venetian blinds. The Venetian blinds. And it's. Um, I can't have those in my house, by the way. You have those? I can't. Oh, you can't? I can't have those. Oh, HOA stuff? Dakota. Oh, Dakota. No, Dakota. Because, even worse, because the them. cat. <laughs> because the cat will destroy them. You know what I got I charged like... like 70 bucks for for that when I moved out of my apartment in Rochester. Oh, God. Anywho. Do you have um the top-down, bottom-ups? Top-down, Those are. Th- I put those everywhere. They're so nice. You know how you can like lift the blind up from the bottom, and that's just how they are? Top-down, bottom-ups, you can do that, or you could pull the top down and it just stays wherever you want interesting i just have a i just have i have curtains they They're they still like the same curtains they'll let more light in but not let people look through your window anyway the second oh, picture cool. is um a guy with what looks like it i guess a giant crab on his back yeah kind of um it, it's obviously supposed to be slender actually brandon do you recognize that silhouette I just want to know if you recognize the silhouette because we know I know who that is. I know who it, the origin of that. Silhouette oh, do you? Is. I I do not. <coughs> okay, we're we're gonna talk about that later in the episode. But I know for a fact what they the what Victor Surge used as the basis for most of the original Slenderman images. Oh wow! Okay. Oh, and then there's a so then the, third the, the picture, another, of, which is I it's mean, a police report. Is it supposed to be? Are these supposed to be believable? Uh, it's up to you. <laughs> Whether it's, or not it's supposed to be believable. It looks like a scan of a police department paperwork with some like pencil writing on it and Slender Man and blood drops. But it doesn't look... Oh, no. It's totally fake. They it could looks have not, totally they could fake. Have, it looks like, like honestly, an artifact from a video, like a Slender Man video game, I guess. Honestly, if they had just not put the blood splatters on it, it would look way re- more real. But whatever. if they just printed out the paper and wrote it on pencil instead of whatever the fuck this is, yeah. it would have looked. Yeah, that would have worked too. <laughs> yeah. That would have worked too. But regardless, um, so I, I transcribed it. There's like a weird re- police report that is written strangely, like in not using the lines for some reason, whatever. Um, so six eleven. So this is supposed to be like a police report that happened during the time frame of the the previous bit, right? Uh huh. So six eleven ninety three. So all these are going to be in ninety three. Uh, fog rolled in three p.m. It appeared three twenty seven. 
Mark and Evan went outside, couldn't cover them, fog too thick, screams and sounds like a baby laughing, but deeper. It's out in the fog. We may be a little outside of town, but someone will come. 6.13. Rest of us can't sleep. No food, no power. 6.14. What does it want? (laughs) Tom showed me that civil case file. 6.15. Wilkes place. Wilkes. Same, 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 same. Slenderman, Slenderman, kill us already. Kill us, kill us, kill. Kill us, kill, kill, kill. So it's it's a lot. That was that was all in like like you can barely read it handwriting. Yeah. Um but I I took the effort to transcribe it just it's, because it's I would argue it's, it's still better than your handwriting. <laughs> it is still better than my handwriting. You don't have to throw me under the under the bus constantly, but okay. It is in fact technically better than my handwriting. God damn it, Brandon. Um, <laughs> I mean, so what What uh, Victor Surge is trying to do here is he's trying to, like, add a meta narrative to it by, like, having these, like, images that supposedly depict things that are real, but they're clearly not, right? So, mm-hmm. like, the thing about Slender Man and all these original pictures is they're all very clearly photoshops, right? Oh, yeah. Um, The first two being the best, by the way. Yes, the first two so far are far. the absolute best. Yes. I'd argue that the very first one with the like angry looking kid looking into the into the camera, that's uh-huh. the best one of them all because it's the most vague. Yeah. Right? Um and then it just starts to get like less impressive as time goes on. Especially the one with the the tentacle in the corner. That one's pretty bad. Yeah. Um But what he's trying to do is establish this like lore. He's trying to establish this notion of like Oh, there's some events, yada, 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 blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. Right. Um, so already, features and traits of Slender Man are beginning to form. There are only five posts at this point, none of which say literally anything delib- like definitive about Slender Man. Mm-hmm. We don't know where he came from. We don't know where he'll go. But we can definitely be sure <laughs> he is not Cotton Eye Joe. Uh, which is about an STD, by the way. It, I've heard it's been about. I've heard it being about several things, some of them racist. Oh, I didn't hear those. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard some of those. Um, anywho, so on a roll, June twelfth, two thousand nine, Victor so- Surge posts more images. Um, several MS Paint drawings of a young boy and uh-huh. Slender Man signed Jake, age seven. The set of four images gets progressively more distressing as Slender Man stalks Jake's kills what may be his parents, and then appears to be chasing the boy. Images show invitations to a, quote, dinosaur party on May 18th, a thank you note, and a photo of the said party with Slenderman lurking in the background are then included. Um, Victor also has a newspaper article from May 21st, 2004, describing the different disappearance of eight-year-old boy of an eight-year-old boy, Jake, from Wichita, Kansas. In the article, the boy is said to have been seen at the edge of the woods... And his, his school says that he had been complaining about a tall, uh, a tall man, a tall, thin man dressed in all black. Finally, another, an additional MS Paint drawing, this time by seven-year-old Rebecca. Uh, in this drawing, it looks like a blonde girl can be seen with her mother at night while Slender Man looks on in the background, hiding behind a lamppost. So, um... Surprisingly, these actually kind of work better for me than the... Like this, this like set of like the MS like, Paint images. Images, yeah. Ki- this kind of works better for me um, up until the the article because the article is very clearly a fake. Like, you go to a website, type out something, and then it fills it in for you. Yeah. Um, but this like set of let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight of these, eight of the nine images here work for me, right? In terms of the storytelling, yeah. Because like. It starts out with uh, the kid interacting with Slender Man, right? And it's like all MS Paint, and it, it kind of does look like what a child would draw on MS Paint a little bit. Yeah. Um, that being said, I'm not sure if this is supposed to be crayons, because if it's supposed to be crayons, this fails miserably. Yeah, it depends on what the intent is. It's either su- yeah. really succeeds or fails. Yes. There's one of two things here. Um and I, I'm pretty sure that because it's an Evite, this is a relatively recent to the time that the post was made thing, right? Because that's not a... Gosh. But regardless. A dinosaur party um, sounds dope. 
it does sound pretty dope. But when we get into the actual like literal picture, right? You can see that one. That yeah. once again is going back to a decent Photoshop and a decent like hint at there being something more, right? Yeah. Because you can barely see Slender Man in this photo. He's just like a sliver between two trees. He's a shoulder. Right? He is a shoulder. Um, but like overall, uh, oh, and then there's some text that was on under the, um, the images. Alert, alert, deployment request. Anti-S Walker unit to deploy to Wichita, Kansas. So... Basically, what Victor Surge is doing is he's hinting at some form of agency whose job it is to handle appearances of Slenderman. And now, at this point, I need to talk about something else that we've talked about on this podcast, which is the SCP Foundation. Yes. Which, as we all know, has one of the horniest entities in the history of horny. Malo. Um, yeah, but in addition to that, it had been around since 2007, and I actually kind of remember the original posts of the SCP Foundation back on like the X board uh-huh. on 4chan because I've been on I've been on the internet that long <laughs> <laughs> for too long for way too long um but he's definitely pulling on like SCP Foundation like kind of vibes with that play yeah because like keep in mind these would be people that Victor Surge would be the guy Eric Nudson would be totally aware of all this he would be deep in deep in internet culture because I was aware of all these things too Right. Yeah. So I'm saying this because he was he was deep enough in that he was actually making posts. I was just lurking. So mm-hmm. like, if I knew about this stuff at the time, he definitely knew about <laughs> this stuff. Um, but here, uh, Victor Search is pulling from very like common contemporary horror motifs, mm-hmm. featureless entities, uncanny resemblances to humans, stalking, secret organizations, and even an appeal to protect the children. Right. So there's like a lot going on in the design of this whole thing that mm-hmm. is more than just like like I'll give Victor Surge credit. There is some thought that he put into this. It's not like it wasn't thought through at all, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's pulling on some pretty like solid tropes and he's doing some pretty solid things with some of his images. Um so after this, he continues to make posts, giving glimpses through various ascensions, both prose and photoshops. Two posts come on June 13th, and this is all the posts that... I'm, I'm going over all the posts that Victor Surge made, because, like, in my opinion, that's canon canon. Yeah, he's right? the daddy. Um, But there is, like... So, there's multiple canons for Slenderman, because of course there are. Yeah. Um, Now, I like so this on June- image, too. Like, it's not more believable, but it does it more for me, like, vibes... This image, like, is definitely creepier. It's like the uh, yeah. black and white, you know, misty wood with the, uh, in this case, Slender Man is uh, Doc Ocking his way through the the woods following a yeah. backpacker. Yeah, this one's definitely, this is definitely the one that if you see at night, it'll, like, give you pause. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah. Right? Like, it's clearly fake, but at the same time, it's, it's creepier. Ether- ethereal enough that it, yeah. like, feels... It's just in that, like, realm of Uncanny Valley of, like, I know this is fake, but what if? Because, like, look at how, how the dude looks, like, that's being followed. He doesn't look that much different than Slender Man in terms of, no. like, physical presence. Like, this could be so, like a screenshot from, like, a symphonic metal video. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's, it's honestly, this is one of the better photos. Yeah. Um because it really, it really kind of, it hits out the like notion of dread that I think Victor Surge was trying to go for. I just realized that this episode has become an art critique. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. How about that? <laughs> Professional art critics, Brandon and John. Yeah. Yes, we are. Hey, um, I'm, so I'm, this... we have art. We art. We art. We art. We art. <laughs> art, art. Um, so both subjects were hunting the Slender Man. Uh, so this is this is the prose that was underneath the photo that we were just talking about. Um, both subjects were hunting in the Steinman Woods four hours before sundown. Surviving subject states that while hunting, both men grew uneasy as fog levels rapidly increased. A constant murmuring sound accompanied by a low hum eventually became apparent to the two men an hour after the fog increased. 
An object falling out of the tree struck one of the men on the left shoulder, causing him to discharge his weapon. Object said to be the body of a man of unknown age. It was very price. Okay. Now, <laughs> this is something that I was in a. Okay. So I'm taking up. I'm pausing because this is there's still more in this section. Uh huh. This is something that I actually wasn't aware of being a thing associated with Slender Man until I was doing this research. Now, I want to know if you've ever heard of this because this is like a weird one that for whatever reason never like crossed my radar. So, object said that to be the body of a man of unknown age. It was very precisely dissected with major internal organs still contained within the ribcage in what looked to be clear bags. Surviving subject placed organ bag within backpack. Attack followed several minutes later after a low children's laugh like a giggle. Surviving subject ran until he reached his vehicle. Subject then drove to assume safety. Backpack destroyed. Surviving, surviving subject is cr- classified as a B7 witness. B7 witness to be placed in quarantine blind box until resolution. So, Brandon, have uh, you ever heard of that? I've never heard of, like, the organ bagging from yeah, Slender Man. Yeah, me either. Like, apparently it's been a thing since, like, day three of Slender Man's existence, though. I wonder why no one or ever so. really latched onto that, because that's a cool, like, uh, thing. It's, I think it's like, I think the problem with it is... It's too much. So here's my, it's too much, uh, right? Right, like, why would he be doing that? Yeah. Like, what's the, what's the, like... What's he getting Dissecting at? and there's no organs? That would make more sense. That would be a more, like interesting thing or even dissecting and then just putting all the taking all the organs out and putting them back in right yeah but putting them in bags is weird they're right? all That's very the... clearly labeled he's a serial killer with wild ocd yes like everything it, that... must be labeled everything yeah <laughs> that's that's where like that hurts it ultimately for me yeah right um but regardless this is a part of the story. Now, the next photo that was on this post, this one might be my favorite Slender Man photo of them all. It's a very good um, one. It's very good because you can't tell that he's in the photo initially. No, you, you, you really have to look because he, he's not really even centered. You really have to look for him. You know, he's, no, he's, he's not. He's roughly center of all the other ones. This one, he's way off to the left. Um, yeah. Behind, There's, behind this a tree. Is, this, yes. He's this, creeping. This, he, kinda, he kind of embodies the, the sensation of like a hide behind, the like, uh, fearsome critter yeah right um but like i think that this one's the most eerie one and if i saw this like at, on a late night and i wasn't aware of it <coughs> entirely and i was like in the right headspace this would be the one that freaked me out it yeah. was gonna be any of them he's a little tree so, pervert yeah he is he is absolutely a tree pervert uh-huh in these early stories <laughs> um in 2007, investigation team discovered 22 bodies of both genders and of various ages impaled on broken tree branches in a radiating circle pattern with chest mutilation as often noted with Slender Man. Upon confirmation, lead investigator uh, expunged called for an immediate evacuation of investigation team at 1700 hours. Bodies first discovered at 1100 hours. Deadline for safe evacuation of team with only viewed physical evidence of Slender Man approximately 1730. Lost contact with team at 1725. Safety procedures fell within well-established protocols. Reason for abnormality is unknown. Second team recovered camera equipment one week later. Slender Man's safety pro- procedures require the incident's physical photographic evidence to be disposed of by no later than 1020. So, once again, he's like really leaning into the whole there's this organization that knows about Slender Man is like yeah. dealing with it thing. Which... To me, isn't like mirrored as much in later work from my perspective. Um, but then again, I also will say that like a lot of how you how I think of Slender Man is is colored by that Slender Man game, Slender, the original Slender game yeah. with like the eight pages. Yeah, the that's eight pages that colors a, yeah, yeah, that one colors a lot of my like perceptions of Slender Man, like that particular thing, which um yeah, that that's basically it, right? The whole like static bursts and all that stuff. That's yeah. that's super associated with Slender Man for me because of the way that I think because the game was so freaky, right? Because it was just a jump scare game, right? Yeah. Like, um, but it 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 did what it needed to do and it made you afraid. So like, 
it has a bigger it has an out like a oversized impact on people i feel like in terms of their perceptions of slender man um now uh the other thing that's kind of interesting here was the like uh radiating patterns and broken trees mm-hmm. like you know like kind of impaling them and all that stuff like that you see if he if he had led with that and never put the clear bags thing in yeah that, that would does have been more. way better that does right? more for the like, lore because like that's creepy and it kind of had it evokes this sense of like ritual too yeah right putting put like why is why is slender man a polluter why is he just putting <laughs> things in plastic bags he's the right? anti like, uh smoky bear pretty he's much. the opposite Smokey says don't do forest fires and Slender Man is out there trying to hand out uh, uh, six pack rings to sea turtles. It's also implied that he's responsible for fires too. Yeah, he's the opposite of Smokey. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also want to take a second to note that Smokey Bear has a card in that game, that god awful card game MetaZoo. Oh gosh. Yeah. Is this like still a around? Card for him. It is still around. You can buy... Sometimes you can buy it in Target. What? Yeah. Wait, how do you the buy smoky... it in Target? It's... I don't, I, I don't care. It's because it's a I've crypto this... thing. It's a cryptid thing. Well, and crypto. Like, it's tied to cryptocurrency somehow. Is it now? I thought it was. Oh, fucking crazy. I don't think... I don't remember it being, but if it is, I wouldn't be surprised. Um, It, it looks terrible, but... Whatever, We're, we'll we'll move on past that. We've talked about MetaZoo and my feelings towards MetaZoo at length. I feel like on this podcast, of uh, I'm still mad that they didn't send us product. <laughs> Give us your stuff. We we're yeah. owed by both MetaZoo and Extreme Restraints. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm more Extreme Restraints because we've done absolutely free advertising for that. Far more by Extreme Restraints. <laughs> <laughs> um. So Victor Surge through these posts adds additional uh, details to how Slenderman quote unquote works, right? Yeah. The first blurb indicates that he's a murderer, right? And he does so in a b- bizarre manner. Um, and we're not sure if the victim's alive or dead when he does this thing, right? Mm-hmm. To like wrap them in plastic bags or whatever. There's no explanation, no image, no nothing. Uh, but the images that are included are pretty, pretty eerie, right? We talked about that a little bit. Um, but anywho, the, the post concludes with a section written from the perspective of Victor Surge in character. Uh, honestly, I don't get what, what half of this poo-poo means. I'm done with the Slender Man stuff. It's starting to make me uneasy. It's like reading GBS, general bullshit. It was, it's like a form. Uh-huh. Ghost story threads before I go, go to bed. Why do I have to look at this stuff while it's super late? Frowny face. Luckily, my friend is coming over. Now, I also want to take a moment to say poo poo, I think was an automatic uh was an automatic word replacement oh. that existed on something awful for shit. Yeah. So, um because I why noticed it a lot. Pr- a premium why would you pay a fee to join a forum where they're gonna censor cuss words? Uh, so funny story. Uh, relating to that. That was super common around that time period. I don't know if you remember that. Um, but on 4chan, Wapanese was the yeah. original, was what originally was what Weeboo was, right? White Japanese, yeah. right? That was what it originally meant. Um, but what happened was Moot put a filter on the message board to replace it with Weeaboo from uh, Perry Bible Fellowship because oh. there's just a random comic at, uh, comic in which a bunch of people beat the shit out of someone while screaming weeaboo. Yeah. Um, huh. And that's the origin of weeaboo, a 4chan word filter. I did not know that. Well, actually, the origin of it in its current context, the origin of it is Perry Bible Fellowship. Yeah. So, now you know. Um, so, minutes later, and when I say minutes, I mean 13 minutes exactly, uh, Victor Surge uploads a final image in a brief message. My friend is here, just came in, barely made it upstairs, got picture, locked door, but it's right there in the hall. Don't look at its picture. It doesn't want to be known. Don't look. So this is the single worst picture of Slender Man. <laughs> Agreed. Out of all of them. It's horrendous. <laughs> he looks like a crash test dummy 
uh, with the <laughs> fucked up thumb. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much. Um, so it is hideous. They gave Slenderman a mouth for some reason. I don't, I don't know. It's weird because like the mouth, the mouth doesn't do it. The mouth like fucks up the whole thing. Yeah, in my opinion. Um, but also what he's doing here, what Victor Surge is doing here, is he's like ending his need to create stuff for this because he's basically killing off his character that was posting the things. Yeah. Cuz the implication is Slenderman got to the person who was posting this, but for some reason the person posting it was able to post to a uh message board in 2009. Uh <laughs> He was able to There's a lot here, right? There's he a was lot able going to take on. a photo. He was able to take a photo in black and white, upload it to a message board, and write a post for it while he was being murdered by Slenderman. <laughs> So, remember me. Not, yeah, not exactly the uh, the most believable of posts. No, but I mean, hey, Slenderman kills you like the uh, the the roller in uh, 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 Austin Powers. Basically, <laughs> that's what the implication is here. Yeah. He's just like, ah. Uh... <laughs> He's like, wait, 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 Slenderman. I know you don't like your picture being uploaded, but I got to upload this. Okay? Like, just let me upload this shit. You got it? <laughs> okay. All right, now you can kill me. <laughs> um So, there's an imp- now there's an implication that even investigating or looking into Slenderman like means that you can be attacked, mm-hmm. right? Um but Victor Surge very soon, like, after this, breaks character, right? And he starts to explain the the history, like, the the origin of all these ideas. Yeah. Um, the Slender Man as an idea it was made up off the top of my head, although the concept is based on a number of things that scare me. The name I thought up on the fly when I wrote that first bit. The acid I used for a couple of the pictures was a creepy ca- tall guy from Phantasm. Oh. The movie. Yeah. So if you look, if you go back up and look, you can totally see the fad phantasm old man in like particularly the Venetian blind one. It's pretty obvious, like the black and white Venetian blind. With oh the yeah, through it. it's totally the it's totally the tall That's man. That's the guy. Um, yeah. So, uh, Victor Surge continues, which sadly I have not seen in the other various guys in suits. All the things that aren't the torso and legs, like the tentacles and Slenderman's face, were painted from scratch. However. Clearly, the face was painted from scratch because it looks terrible. Yeah. But that's a whole other thing. Um, so, Brandon, in short, let's just review all the facts. We know exactly where Slenderman came from. We know when he first appeared on the internet. We know the sources of the original images. We know who made it. We know Victor Surge's real name is Eric Knudsen. We even know that parts of the horse pastiche that it, assembled from, that it was assembled from, including... Zach Parsons, The Insidious Beast, Shadow People, Mothman, which is episode 52, The Mad Gasser of <laughs> Mattoon, which is episode 44, Phantasm, H.P. Lovecraft, Silent Hill, Resident Evil, Men in Black, episode 53, just to name a few. So we know all of these facts in three of the, the inspirations we've already done episodes of. <laughs> um, but the damage is already done at this point. Yeah. Slender Man was an instant hit like people fucking like it it was like flies on shit in terms of like internet stuff um people started to make their own photoshops to flesh out the story and the entity has taken a life of its own beyond victor surge's control uh to the best of my knowledge the first image produced by someone other than victor was released on june 12th 2009 by leech code 5 and um the the first one is kind of shitty, but the second one's decent, and this was the pros that went with it. So I've been seriously debating showing these, but after S- Victor Surge's post, I feel I have to. The first photo was given to me by Uncle, a police officer who was part of the investigation trying to find nine missing teens who had gone camping on the local fa- mountains six years ago. It was developed from a disposable camera found at the campsite. None of the missing teens have ever been found, and all their possessions were still at the campsite. He was pretty drunk and shaping up when he gave me this and made me promise I'd never show it to anyone else. So you can see that there is like a picture of a bunch of teens sitting around a fire, uh-huh. right? Um, and then the slendo, slendo boy in the back. Yeah, this one's not, not necessarily not the best. 
it it looks like it looks like there's just like a thumb floating in the. In it the woods does, a but bit. like a cartoon thumb, like it doesn't look. Yeah, everything else looks it's kinda, real, and that looks like a cartoon, like a flat it, it, cartoon. It reminds me of Spy Kids. Oh yeah, like, remember the thumb, the thumb men? Yeah, 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 a little yeah, bit yeah. like that. Except like if they were wearing like all black bodysuits. Um. The, the post continues. The second photo is an, of an elementary school fire in 1978. No official cause was ever found. Several student, Seven students and a teacher became trapped and died before firefighters could respond. Many of the students and the teachers from the time have a history of anxiety disorders and panic attacks. Even those who weren't at the school that day. At least one has since, and I've, I've edited it here, died by suicide because the original one was, you know... The, the term that we shouldn't use anymore. Um, and several others legally changed their names once they reached adulthood and have disappeared. And the second one is a little better because they hide the slender you, they hide slender man in the, the smoke. Yeah. You gotta look for it. Right? So. Yeah, I like the ones where it's not obvious. Yeah. I, I think, I honestly think that's the strength of slender man, right? Is he works best when you're not really sure he's there. Yeah, like, he has to be the background character that you have to look for in the, the main thing. He can't yeah. be the, like, standout. Like, he, he, he can't be, like, the center of focus. Otherwise, it loses everything. His design's not good enough to be center of focus. No. Right? That's the problem. He can't, like... Like, if, you, if you're faced with a situation where you're looking at him too long, it, he loses... He loses a lot of his, like, fear element. Yeah. Right? Like, you looking at the picture of him have to be almost as unaware of his existence as the people who he kills are unaware of him, kind of. Yeah, pretty much. Because, like, I mean, there is an exception to this, like, when people do Slenderman costumes. But that's just because a dude is wearing a, uh, generally a dude is wearing a skin tight, uh, like, mask body suit that's white and is wearing a suit which let's be real that's just a weird per that's just weird right yeah like i would be freaked out if i saw somebody wearing like a green man suit <laughs> and just standing in the middle of a field i'd just be like what are you doing buddy <laughs> what are you doing oh, um i could i typed in fat slender man and it turns out someone those people are ahead of me oh that's that's like a thing, Brandon. Yeah. Rooster, uh, Rooster, uh, um, Robot Chicken did it. Oh. Yeah, there's a flat sl Slender Man in, uh, Robot Chicken, and they make a joke about the fact that he's not slender. Ah. Uh, yeah. Ah, uh, shucks. Well, Robot yeah, Chicken, there. if you want to hire me as a writer, I'm, I'm always here, because we clearly have the same, uh, wavelengths. Oh, boy. So, Brandon, I got a question for you. Shoot. What is the legend of Slender Man at this point? Do you have any idea what his legend is? There isn't. Like, if if you could describe Slender Man's legend, what would you describe it as? There isn't a legend. Like, he's just a thing that kills people. And there's the other thing so far that's missing from, and I'm sure you'll, you might touch on it, is, like, him onboarding, like, humans as his minions. Okay, Brandon, that's a whole fucking thing okay. that we're going to talk about later. <laughs> I don't go into a lot of detail about it yeah. because it's dumb as shit, but I do talk about it. Okay. So let's, <laughs> we'll, we'll keep going. Um, so this is where, like, the story gets complicated. Like, he's just um, a creepy thing that kills groups of kids. That's kind of it. Yeah, that's that's it. That's all he is. And people and human like adults too. He kills anyone. He just has a preference for kids. Cool. Yeah. Um. So, to the best of my understanding, there is no definitive canon for Slenderman. Uh, what he does, why he does it, where he does things, and when he does things. Uh, instead, the best I can tell is everything is split into separate mythos, depicting um depending on which Slenderman story you're currently reading at the time. Uh, so far, according to uh, the Slenderman archive wiki dot site, we're referring to we've been talking about the original mythos. So, this collection of stories, 
directly refers to the original Something Awful thread and all of its permutations that are made in it. Um, in addition to a litany of sightings and photoshops of varying quality, there's an effort to give Slenderman a historical basis, right? Yeah. Uh, while participating in the LARP that is the thread. Now, several posters draw links to supposed historical events. Infamously, infamously one of them, called Dear Grossman, uh, was posted by forum user Thorough Up on June fifteenth, two thousand nine. So this is this is the post that Thorough Up had made talking uh-huh. about Dear Grossman. Um, I've been following the signs for quite some time. There are woodcuts dated back to the sixteenth century in Germany, featuring a tall, disfigured man with only white spheres where his eyes should be. They called him Dear Grossman. The tall man, he was a fairy ta- he was a fairy who lived in the black forest. Bad children crept into the woods at night and would be chased by the slender man. And, or, and he wouldn't leave them alone until he caught them or the child told the parents what he or she had done. Even then, in this chilling account from the old journal dating to around 1702, translated from German, some words may be inaccurate. I remember so, this post, by the way. Like I definitely saw yeah, this. Yeah, so this is this this is like a trying to so Slenderman as a concept is just a tall, like gangly white like dude, yeah, right? in a dark suit. So like, honestly, this is kind of like the Ampha, the Amphair Lemorth, the the shadow oh, thing yeah, you yeah, talked yeah. about. Yeah, it's the, very the similar. Yeah. It has it has extremely similar vibes, right? Because, like, at the end of the day, really what Slenderman is tapping on is this notion of, of the Uncanny Valley, right? Yeah. It's a human with two long arms, right? Mm-hmm. It's not that hard to make that, like, a spooky thing, right? And, like, the reason it's a spooky thing in so many cultures is because, like, the way the human brain is, like, has evolved is to identify differences yeah, in your inv- your natural environment, and then like react to that. So like, as a result, things that are slightly different that aren't quite right set us off. Yeah, because that's just how our brain works. <laughs> because it kept us alive. Yeah, yeah, it's just trying to keep us from from dying. It's trying to keep us from getting eaten by the the tiger, so to speak. Yeah. Um. So the the apparent journal says the following. My child, my Lars, he is gone, taken from his bed. The only thing we found was a scrap of black clothing. It feels like cotton, but it is softer, thicker. Lars came into my bedroom yesterday, screaming at the top of his lungs. The angel is outside. I asked him what he was talking about, and he told me some nonsense fairy story about Der Grossman. He said he went into the groves of our village and found one of my cows dead, hanging from a tree. I thought nothing of it at first, but now he is gone. We must find Lars, and my family must leave before we are all killed. I am sorry, my son. I should have listened. May God forgive me. Um, there is more evidence of the Slenderman, but this is one of the oldest translatable accounts. Anyone else in the Fred thread found anything like this? So, um, and then somebody else made a woodcut of the supposed Dirk Grossman, which yeah. is pretty fucking clearly a Photoshop, but whatever. Yeah. Um, so I want to take a moment here to say I did look into Dear Grossman and he doesn't exist as far as I can tell. No, well, that's as a Germanic legend. That's the cool um, thing about um, these things on the Internet. Like, yes, Slender Man's a thing that we know the origin of, but also like Dear Grossman was invented to like support as support material, so like yes. other things get wholly created out of like new cloth just to support this other thing. Yeah, and you've got this cool little spider web of um yeah things. And I could be wrong, and there is like a Der Grossman in in German mythology, right? I'm sure our German listener will tell us if that's the case, and we we we've, we've had a miss, and we'll we'll follow up later. But as far as I can tell, there's no like existence of it. It's it's just wild because Slender Man, because of the way Slender Man was created, there is this like need for surrounding scaffolding, as you mentioned. Yeah. Right? Like he has to be scaffolded to be believable. Because if he isn't, it's just a it's a clear Photoshop. But when you scaffold it and put like all these additional like his, quote unquote historical facts associated with him, it makes him more real in a sense, right? Um and also because people don't bother to 
do the research. Yeah, people, that's the, <laughs> that's the thing that makes, that's what am I trying to say? That's people what makes know that possible. people don't do the research and just fabricate supporting evidence. And that drives far more than just Slenderman, but like a lot of the other things that, that help lift up a lot of the other things we spoke about. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, we wouldn't have a podcast if that weren't the case. Exactly, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's be real. We would have nothing to talk about in terms of like this content. Yeah. There might still be a podcast because we are two uh, white men in our 30s, which is kind of like, let's be real. That's just like what our kind does. It's what we do. It's what we do. We make podcasts. Yeah. It, it's, I can't, I can't say anything else about it. It's just what we do. Um, so, Milling off to Grossman, uh, another poster, Guyver Mack, talks about two woodcuts from the, the 1500s that appear to show a slender man linkage. A German woodcut from the 1540s has puzzled historians since it was discovered at Haltzburg Castle in 1883. The woodcut bears the distinct style known as woodcut of a known woodcut artist from that area, Hans Freckleberg, Frankenberg. Oh, <laughs> Frankenberg, Frankenberg. <laughs> um, although he's known for his realistic depiction of the humanity in his work, something that was unusual for woodcuts in the 16th century, this picture differs radically from the rest of uh, Frankenberg's Frankenberg's work. The character to the right bears little resemblance to a human being, a skeleton with a skeletal physique, with long limbs at odd angles. Many theories have been discussed as to what Frankenberg. Uh, wanted to symbolize with this character. Some say it was the personification of the religious wars that raged in Europe at the time. Others say the personification of a mysterious plague, blah, 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 blah. Um, another woodcut dated to around 1540, the 1540s. It is the work of Hans Frankenberg, who disappeared in 1543 in Haldstedt. The entity to the right is very similar to the odd humanoid from Frankenberg's earlier woodcut, which... I don't think is accurate based on this own story. No. Like I'm reading this story and I think there's an internal consistency error, uh, but whatever. Um, Dare Ritter, since both share many of the same features, such as unnatural height and long limbs. One thing to point out is the much work went at the entity to the right at the cost of the depiction of the people to the left and middle of the woodcut, uh, which is very crude. Something that is quite unusual for Freckenberg, um, who is well? Who is best known for his lifelike detections of humans in his earlier works? Blah 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 blah. The sudden change in the style, uh, priorities for Freckenberg's style is still a topic of hot debate. So it's written in a way that makes it seem as though it's um, like people talking about like it in a academic way. Yeah. Right. Um, and like if you here the two the two woodcuts are in the copy, Brandon. So like, can you like what do you what do you see in here? Yeah, so there's um, the image on the left is a skeleton with uh, four legs and a pole arm stabbing um, a dancy boy, I guess. Mm -hmm. Someone who, like, I mean, he looks like he's having a blast, kind of. Um, yeah. And then the one on the right looks like um, they're they're different. Like, they're not similar. <laughs> like, the yeah, two no, images they... is the one on the left is like a low res skeleton and the one on the right I'll say is like a high res skeleton um yeah. attacking uh a family just trying to make soup don't fuck with the soup people yeah. like the, the well they're they're taking the children the child I mean maybe it, he looks kind of more he looks like he's the kid's friend and the parents like, oh gosh, Billy, you, you, you don't gotta leave. And he's like, I, I don't know. There's, no, I can't help it. He's throwing his little hand out, like, oh, I'm sorry. Fair enough. So yeah, oh, is that um, the plague? It might death. be the plague. Yeah, that's it's death, death coming from the kid. That's that. That's yeah. plague. So, so the original version of these, it's a depiction of death. Uh, that's what yeah. it is. It's not. It's not like Slender Man. It's death. We know for a fact what the original woodcuts are because yeah. I can I found both of them through Google <laughs> Image Search uh, in like no time whatsoever. Yeah, um, you can literally search Der Ritter and it will pop up. So uh, the fear dub. Is oh yet my another god! Supposed to There's literally an hourglass in both of them. Is there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's it's death. It's, it's literally it, yeah. death. Yeah, it's it. There's no. The, the iconography is clearly death. Yeah. There's no, like, ifs, ands, or buts about it. It is 150% death. There's no question. Um, so, another entity called the Fear Dub 
is another supposed thing that shows evidence of the Slender Man, uh, which predates the original thread. Again, this information comes from the original Create Paranormal Images thread. Uh, this time, the user Irisi shares the legend. In Scotland, there is a legend of the fear dub, the Black Man. This creature is said to haunt solitary footpaths at night, generally those that pass through the woodlands. <laughs> um, it is reputed to be entirely malevolent, malevolent, and it can remember my. I remember my re- granny telling me stories about a lot of Sp- Scottish folk tales. She only ever mentioned the the fear dove once, and that was in church. I was about eight and spending the summer holidays with her. She took me to church on Tuesday morning. Blah 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 blah. Uh, she says he's been at the Baron's window again. The priest just nodded it, that he'd be around later. I was a curious child, so I took a long walk around the house later, built on the edge of woodland, you know, a bunch of, like, setting up that this is, like, a story that exists. Uh, my Grammy stayed, made me stay in Paris that night and put her rosary beads under my pillow. I fell asleep to the sound of wet leaves brushing against my window, and as I dreamed of a thin man who looked at me, even though he had no eyes, and tried to touch me, even though he had no hands. I can't actually remember much of the next few days. My mom says it was the trauma of my grand's funeral that's made those days blurry. But I don't understand I don't understand why, because I coped okay with the funer- other funerals around that age. I still don't understand how Father McAndrews died of a heart attack the same night. He was only 30 and fit as a butcher's dog, which is a <laughs> weird thing to say. I guess because they and eat it- a lot of scraps, maybe? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and if Grand died of a stroke, I don't understand why the police sealed off the house in the woodland. It wasn't the local police either. They were all big, serious men in dark blue and riot gear. Uh, you'd have thought that their presence would have been meant that local vandals would have stayed away, but they didn't. And poor Grand ha- Grand's house got firebombed in a few weeks later. The walls are still standing, though. You can see long, thin streaks in the smokes that make the maid on the weight laws. It almost looks like an octopus's tentacles reaching for you. I still got the rosary, even though people laugh. I sleep with it under my pillow because if I don't, I dream about the sound of the wet leaves sliding across the window and the way he is still watching me, even though he has no eyes. So, like, creepy pasta, yeah. right? Like, clear creepy pasta. There's no question whatsoever. And um, I did do an authenticity check because I uh-huh. always tried to do this. Whenever someone makes a claim about like an existing story, I'm always like, okay, let's look. Because it's probably not true, but you know what? I'll check. Yeah. Um. So as far as authenticity goes, there's none. Uh, oh, Dirk good. Roseman is patently untrue, as I've mentioned already, by, by Trevor Blank and Lynn McNeil, who was in our more critical source this week. Yeah. Um. No record of the creature predating this post, and the supposed wood carving, as we mentioned, is totally inauthentic. The second batch of carvings from the 1500s, featuring Der Ritter, also 100% fake. Um. We know that it was there, and not only that, but an admission from the poster himself says that he used the clone stamp a lot. <laughs> oh, good to make the images. <laughs> um, and I have a picture there of the original image of death. Okay. Um, so that's the original Der Ritter. Mm-hmm. So we know for a fact that that's what it originally looked like. Now, as for Fear Dub, there is in fact an Irish folktale involving a man by that name, although the rendering is significantly different. Um, Fear Dorich. Uh, in the verifiable story I could find, this entity is a sort of villainous druid uh-huh. in the Fenian, the Fenian cycle who transforms a woman, uh, Sadba, into a deer. There is a weird love triangle thing that happens involving what? a hero named Fion, uh-huh. um, where she gets turned back into a human. The hero gets her pregnant, and then Fear Dorich comes back and turns her into a deer, and then she's never seen again. That's the story. Wait, does that um, mean that there's the potential for someone to see a deer giving birth to a human baby and just become wildly confused? I mean, that's the implication of this story, but like <laughs> I'll I'll let you I'll let you decide if that happened. It did in my head, um, Canon. Okay, cool. Uh so this is definitely like nothing like the fear dub yeah. from Eurysi. Um And the only context that I could find it in Scott, like the only time I could find it in a Scottish context is if they were talking about Slender Man. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, What I'm trying to say, Brandon, is the original mythos is very, very, very obviously fabricated whole cloth. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, it's not in question. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. So, to recap, uh, this is everything we know about Slender Man from this original post, this original, like, mythos. Mm -hmm. Slender Man is tall, Thin man, ent- man-like entity with pale white skin and a featureless face, generally. Sometimes he has a mouth, for some reason. 
Um, <laughs> it has the capacity to generate tentacles. It either murder, murders people or drives them insane. It has an affinity for children, although the exact nature of the interaction varies by the storyteller. And it is perennially out of focus and in the background. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, um, basically, at this point, Brandon, so I think we can, you and I are both in agreement that this is a bullshit story. Right. Yeah, it's 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 a fun creepy pasta yeah. with a known source and like timeline and branches and it the worst part is it's not even the best creepy pasta I've read. No, it's like there's much better creepy pasta. Yeah. I think it got popular because of the uh the teamwork vibe at the beginning of like, hey, let's everybody try to work together on a thing well, and then everyone just kind of started tacking on to this other thing. So there's three factors that I think made Slenderman popular. Uh, the first is the teamwork vibe. The second is the the web series Marble Hornets. Uh-huh. Uh, which was a ARG that had like a Slenderman-like creature called the Operator in it. I'm not going to uh-huh. go into detail about it because I tried to watch it's a video. I tried to watch so it. It's been so long since I saw the Marble Hornets. It's also, it doesn't really hold up great. Um, I'm not going to go back to watch it, but I, it's, yeah, been a, I don't, it's been a minute. Um, and then the third thing is the Slender game. Uh-huh. Right. I think those three factors really helped Slender Man, like, get staying power. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the event that we're going to talk about at the end of the episode that, like, kind of solidified it in, like, the zeitgeist. Um, so, but, Brandon, after this, like, original thing, the tor- the story takes a stupid fucking turn. Yep. So anyone reading the thread familiar with how the internet and message boards work could tell you that the above story is whole cloth fabrication. Nobody in there is being serious whatsoever. Right. Um, Throw up was the first to link the mythos to supposedly extant lore. But if you do a Google search of any of these things, it only is. Asso- it's only associated with Slenderman. No yeah. one's talking about it in like a historical context beyond Slenderman. Um, and for those of you who are new to the show and researching claims of the paranormal, this is a red flag. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So the author of the second book that I read for this week, Nick Redfern, apparently is colorblind oh. because he can't see that, that oh. how red that flag is. Fantastic. So in the book, The Slender Man Mysteries, an internet urban legend comes to life, Nick Redfern has the following to say about Dear Grossman. In fact, following Knudsen's uploading of photos, a commenter at the something awful at something awful using the name Slidebite, which might have been the original name of the poster because they could have potentially changed it, yeah, or something along those lines. Uh, oh wait, no, this is this is a separate one. Sorry, sorry. There's 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 a lot of posters that he quotes. <laughs> um, Slidebite predicted that it would not be long before at all before whole swaths of the paranormal research community would come to embrace the Slenderman as a real entity. Now. I want to take a second to say, Slidebite did not say this. <laughs> um, he said, instead, uh, you just know a couple of the good ones are going to be eventually making it into the paranormal websites and be used as genuine. Yeah. Um, which, in retrospect, is the most delicious of irony. Because he wasn't even... T- this was before <laughs> Slenderman was even posted. Yes. Which is phenomenal. Oh. Which... All I can say to, uh, for Nick Redfern is like, Mwah. dude, read the fucking posts and like get a timeline. Make a timeline of the posts and then make your writing. Whatever. So Nick continues, and it gets even dumber from here. The fascination for Slenderman grew quickly and dramatically, driven by Nudson's initial photos and more. M- initial photos, more and more people created their own Photoshop pictures and posted them to Something Awful. Just five days after the phenomenon began, Thoreau Up, who was another Something Awful fan, commented that the imagery and descriptions of the Slenderman mirrored a monstrous creature from Germany whose origins date back centuries. Its name is Der Grossmann, and he doesn't spell it with like the German like spelling. He spells it G-R-O-S-S-A-M-A-N. Huh. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. He doesn't use Wiggly um, B. He doesn't use Wiggly B. Uh, in English, that translates to the tall man. He was a threat to children and lived in the heart of Germany's Black Forest. It's important to note that like Eric, just like Eric Knudsen, Throw Up was not creating a hoax or a fantasy. The story of the tall man is indeed a very old one and certainly does parallel <sighs> certain aspects of the Slender Man phenomena. 
You'll be further exposed to this proto Slenderman later on in the book. A good case can be made that it was comments of slide bite and thorough up that made at least some of the readers of something awful think there might have been something too about the Slenderman that went beyond mere fantasy. Do go do, go far deeper. Do, go go. Do, it, it's there. It, like do, uh, go deep. Uh. Not even just like not even uh. deeper. Just read with a skeptical like read skeptically barely uh. right like. Don't assume that people are talking about truth in a thread that is about creating paranormal images to fuck with oh. people exactly like you. If you read the first post, it literally says, let's create some images to fuck with the paranormal community, basically. Uh. That is basically what the first post is summarized as. Yeah. Anywho. So not knowing what I know about internet communities, uh, Rick Redfern is clearly not from the internet. No. Nobody in that thread believed in Slenderman, and it was a total fucking LARP, right? They sought to freak each other out and freak out other people. That was it. They made a. They even made a fake Wikipedia article for Slenderman, mm-hmm. like, early on, that got, like, taken down, like, five times. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it was, it was something. Now, but Brandon, even though there was no sincere belief in that thread... Uh-huh. The same can't be said for Lauren Coleman's wife, Jenny Coleman. Oh. In her August 2014 article in the Fortean Chimes, Shadows of the Thin Man, and it just so happened, I have that article. Oh. Uh, Jenny unironically cites Der Ritter and Fear Dub as precedents for the entity, despite uh, both seeing their origin in the original Slenderman uh, thread. She doubles down in a 2017 uh, interview with Nick Redfern, the tall man, uh, and reports thereof have been around since the er- since early Irish and German mythology. Found in a place, found a place in art and written word. Fear Dub and Der Grossman, respectively. She also goes on to mention Men in Black, Voldemort, the Biblical Serpent, Indrid Cold, Shadow People, and even Jack the Ripper in what? her interview. You're hurting my soul. Yeah, oh. but Brandon, it gets even fucking better. So. Returning to Nick Redfern's chronology events, he then notes that on November 6, 2009, a group of listeners dialed into Coast to Coast AM to tell their Slenderman stories. Now I'm going to have a seizure tried... if you keep talking. I'm going to have a seizure. Brandon, it's, it's not even at the dumbest part yet. It's not even at the dumbest part yet. Oh, <laughs> no. So, um, uh. now, I archives of 4chan from 2009 aren't as... Uh, detail as they used to be so I can't find out if there was originally a 4chan raid um, but I vaguely remember there being a 4chan raid around that time calling into Coast to Coast <sighs> I actually remember several calling into Coast to Coast if my memory is correct um, I did however listen to the Coast to Coast recording and uh, for those of you who are wondering the shenanigans are kicked off by 17 year old named Nick at hour 2 minute 23 of the November 6 2009 episode now, that being said, after listening to a decent chunk of that episode, <laughs> I become far dumber. Oh, gosh. Now, You're taking one for the Nick, team so hard. Nick Redfern. So this episode took me like three days to make. Uh, Even though it's like largely quotes, it was me trying to find the most representative quotes of how batshit stupid this is. So Nick Redfern's response to the fabrication, Brandon. Some might suggest that the people who phoned into Coast to Coast AM were hoaxers. Maybe they were. Maybe they weren't. But it doesn't really matter. If enough of the Coast to Coast AM audience believe what they were hearing, then that collective combined belief would have gone a significant way towards ensuring that the Tulpa version of the Slender Man would soon be up and running. And guess what? He was. Now, Brandon, we have to talk about fucking Tulpas. Because, of course, we do. Uh, so, somehow, despite this podcast being on the air for four years now, which is wild, first of all, um, we haven't talked in great depth about the stupidity of the concept that is the cult- Topa. Now, the, yeah, like, we, we, it comes up, and then there's, like, I'll call, I'll say paranormal Topa, and then, like, Topa. <laughs> yeah. So 
I listen to several pod. I, I listen to a shitload of stuff. I listen to pe- a person on a podcast uh, by Monster Talk, uh-huh. um, who is a like to like their their like area of research is like Tibetan religions. Like mm. they were doing Tibetan religion research, um, and basically, so you've probably heard of the Topa, right? Yep. Um, especially like in general, people out there because it was on it was on um supernatural as well uh which it's funny because like apparently the 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 character that they used to represent the topo was like a meaningless character in tibetan <laughs> for like by itself it was like a modifier of some kind or something um but regardless uh if proponents are to be believed brandon uh-huh. the topa is a concept of tibetan origin wherein an individual or individuals can will an entity into existence through extreme or collective thought Really, though, Brandon, the modern co- like conception of a topa is a completely Western concept. Yeah. So um, they were originally known as something called thought forms and uh, are proposed by theosophist Annie Besant in the Theosophist magazine Lucifer in 1895. Now, if you aren't aware of what a theosophist is, remember that rant I had on the Visa Prey Road <laughs> about uh, Helena Blavat- Blavatsky? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's that's her particular brand of bullshit. Um, so the Topa name was added by Andrea Alexandra David Neal in her 1929 book, book Magic and Mystery in T- Tibet. Topa is a bastardiz- bastardization of Shopa. A very real Tibetan concept, rep- which is roughly translated as the incarnation or eminence of a Buddha. The uh-huh. Dalai Lama is a Shropa. A sh- a shpopa. I'm not saying it correctly, but it's it, Shropa. Topa is a Topa is a very bad way of writing. Is a is a like not very authentic way of writing it. Basically, um, a Topa is the rebrand brand of the mystic concept of the thought form. That David Neal po- po- probably knew about uh, to give it the flair of the Mystic East. So David Neal took a Western concept, wrapped it in uh, race people's racism towards the <laughs> East, in that they thought that it was mystical and like the source of knowledge. Yeah, and then re- represented it back to Westerners as. A thing that came from Tibet, even though it was like made by someone in London. He 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 got a hamburger from McDonald's, covered the bag in like Tibetan characters, and then resold it back to them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She so Alexandra, um, the this woman also uh so like the story. Um Okay. So regardless of the actual provenance, people now believe that con- that tulpas are a thing, despite like it literally making no fucking sense, right? If you focus on something, it becomes it being real for long enough, it suddenly becomes real. Um, which <laughs> there's there's a few entities that should exist that don't exist. Uh, there's a that lot. should exist based on the amount of collective belief that those things are real, but they don't. So whatever. Um, the inaugural tulpa descri- described by David Neal was supposedly made in Tibet and took the form of, and Brandon, I shit you not, it was a friar monk named Philip. Uh-huh. This woman was in Tibet and she imagined a friar monk into existence. <laughs> when she's surrounded by Tibetan monks. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. So Philip had been willed into existence by David Neal, and it was to the point that some supposedly other people could see it over time becomes evil, and she puts it down by some means, you know. Blah, 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 blah. Um, John Keel of the Mothman Prophecies fame, oh good, episodes fifty two and fifty three. So of this many podcast. names. There's so many bullshit names coming up. <laughs> yeah, it's really great. Oh. I hate. I hate everything. Um, Use this concept to explain why people saw aliens and supernatural entities that were identical to things that they saw on television and in movies. Uh, I'm going to have to go into not, my scream chamber for a little bit after this. Not not because of bad memory, Brandon. No, 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 no. These were the collective thoughts of humans across the world willing these entities into existence. Ah. <sighs> uh, uh. Okay, and now Brandon, I'm about to get. Now we're gonna get into the upsetting part. 
like um, emotionally upsetting. Uh, no, maybe spiritually upsetting. Uh-huh. We'll get we'll go there. Uh, in in modern terms, around the time Slenderman came into existence. Oh shit! Hang on, was... I read. F- I'm so sorry. I just my eyes wandered ahead. <laughs> my eyes wandered ahead. <laughs> oh damn! <clears throat> All right, continue. I need. I needed. Uh, I got. I have to. I have to brace myself. Yeah, you do. Uh. So, um, there was a trend on 4chan around the time Slenderman came into existence uh-huh. of people being known as Topomancers oh, on 4chan yeah. and Reddit. Now that was a time. Yeah, this was around 2010 that this happened. So it was about a year after Slenderman. But Brandon, you remember My Little Pony: Friendship Is Magic? Right? I do. It I hit, thoroughly it enjoyed a few seasons. The first season was great, yeah. right? But um. You also remember that adult men got fucking disgusting with it. Yep. Like, terribly disgusting. <laughs> uh-huh. Um, and if you don't remember how disgusting they got, just uh, just Google Rainbow Dash Jar with a safe search off. Uh, oh, wait. man. I'll wait. I'll wait for it. Rainbow Dash. And then go to images, jar. Brandon. Go to images. Oh. Yeah. Oh, this one has text. I come before Does you it? today to reveal a horrible accident to the Pony Cum Jar Project. Oh, oh. The place where I was yeah. hiding my cum jar was actually on top of a radiator that was connected to our furnace. Oh, no. Basically, the yeah. Rainbow Dash figure has been boiled in cum. It's brown now. And for comparison, I also got another glass full of cum. Oh, no. <laughs> So, fucking awful, right? Oh, yeah. So, um, long story short, people made My Little Pony tulpas on the internet for a while to fuck them. Yeah. Woo. So, I know not everyone did, but one person fucking a My Little Pony tulpa is already too many. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not trying to say that the Rainbow Dash jar is someone fucking a tulpa. That's just a dude abusing a toy. Um, yeah. But that's a separate, that's a totally separate thing and just illustrates how fucked up people got around My Little Pony. Now, I digress. Uh, now, the proponents of Slenderman's actual existence uh, point to the collective focus of kids and teenagers on the existence Chokes of Slenderman. Jokes on you, Slenderman. We're going to tulpa you to fuck you. <laughs> I mean, definitely some people want to fuck Slenderman. Wrap me in those wiggly arms. They definitely want to fuck him. <laughs> Like, let's be real. He's got tentacles. Somebody wants to fuck him. He's got tentacles. I've got a butt. Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> it's there. It's right there. It's just for the taking. Um. So, basically, the assumption is kids and teenagers willed him into existence. Yeah. Um. Re- regardless of whether or not he was real to start, according to, to Nick Redfern, he's real now, and that's what really matters. And Nick Redfern leans into this so goddamn hard. That, like, if Slenderman did really exist, I would think that he was paying Nick Redfern to write this book. <laughs> um, it's the only way so, I can keep existing. <laughs> but, Brandon, it gets even dumber. Uh-huh. The book posits that the internet itself has gained sentience, which may have contributed to the existence of Slenderman. And then further, Brandon, he alleges that H.P. Lovecraft's stories were based on the man the man seeing other planes of existence. No, they weren't. <laughs> that was his implication. He, uh, is, he was also talking about the Night Gaunts being like proto-Slenderman or some bullshit. Um, uh, but then Brandon... He also has shit to say about the Waukesha teen stabbing case from 2014. Uh, I can't wait what kind of hot take this guy's got. Now, you, may, I'm sure a lot of people remember this, but basically, long story short, uh, we'll describe it. It happened on May 31st, 2014. I don't really want to go into much depth here because there are literal books and documentaries about it, right? And I don't want to really go into this horrific incident because it's even though ten, Slenderman is tangentially related I don't think Slenderman is like the actual like thing to blame here I think there's a lot more deeper issues that are at play that need to be talked about but that's a whole like like that's a whole podcast episode and there have been podcast episodes and shows and movies and whatever about it 
Um, long story short, two 12 year old girls, 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 two 12 year old girls who extremely, who are extremely close to one another, like best friends, Anissa Weir and Morgan Geyser attempted premeditated murder against their third friend, Peyton Lutner. Um, the motivation they gave was a fear of Slenderman and a desire to become his proxies, living with him in his mansion in Nicolette National Forest, roughly 300 miles from the site of the stabbing, which they had intended to walk to, by the way. It's a long walk. I'll it go ahead and say walk. that. Um, and now, Brandon, Brandon, you might ask, what the fuck is a proxy? And you did, actually, earlier in the episode. Yeah. Because that was the thing you were asking about. <laughs> Why does Slenderman have a mansion? Yeah, so you remember the the fact that I was talking about multiple cannons? Yeah. Yeah, the best I can tell, the the proxy concept originates in the Tribe 12 Slenderman ARG. Um, who are based, so basically, as far as I can understand it, proxies are mall Santas of Slenderman. Okay. In that they enact his will when he's too busy for that personal touch. So, like, like so Santa like, Claus has his mall Santas to go out and do yeah. his mall, to do his Santa bidding. Slenderman has proxies, which are like his mall Santas. They're mall Slenderman. Gotcha. Like, Slenderman's Hugh Hefner. The proxies are like, if all the bunnies were clones of Hugh Hefner. Kind of. I, I don't know if Hugh Hefner is the best thing here. Probably not. No. It, it would be like it would be like Hugh Hefner he and the various photograph the various photographers that take pictures of women for took pictures of women for Playboy and abused them in some way or shape or form. That would be that would be the case. Oh, he's dead. That would be more apt of a huh? Oh, he's dead. I was just checking if he was dead yet. Yeah, no, he's been dead for a while. Yeah. Um. Anywho, I'm not going to elaborate on it, Brandon, because it, it's so fucking stupid at this point. It is. It was literally hurting me. To type the copy. <laughs> Good. The mansion concept, as far as I can tell, either originates in the Slenderman Shadow or Slender's Wood games, fan clones of the original Slender game that had been released earlier this year. That year. Um, in reality, while Slenderman was the pretext for the stabbing the pair gave to the cops, it was far more likely that this was some fucked up teenage girl drama that got way out of hand. Yeah. Um, possibly exacerbated by the fact that one of the girls, Morgan Geyser, has early onset childhood schizophrenia, um, which is actually a thing, right, that she has, right? Um, suffice to say, however, this spawned a literal moral panic about kids in the internet, despite the fact that studies of, ste- of teens point to a staggeringly low belief in Slenderman. <laughs> Yeah, they don't, here's, there's a strange thing that happens, or or seems to have happened more recently, in that kids don't believe the internet, but adults believe kids believe the internet. Um, And they believe the internet themselves. And they believe it themselves, which is like, (coughs) excuse me. It's baffling. The uh, if you remember the Momo challenge in that in that uh, piece yeah. of art that they destroyed someone's piece of art because adults believed in Momo, but the ki- like. Uh. To be fair, to be fair, uh, the artist destroyed the art because he was mad that it was like this whole thing. Yeah, because it wasn't like the point of it, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, there's there's also like a story. So like people link another thing to. So there was like a bunch of uh, Native American reservation mm-hmm. uh, suicides or like attempted suicides that was tied to Slender Man, right? Because there was also another like entity that was similar to him and whatever and yada, yada, yada. And like, but really at the end of the day, I think that that can be probably more tied to the fact that we treat indigenous peoples like shit. Yeah. Um, than anything else. So like I'm not about to talk about that in depth because that's once again that's that's kind of Wendigo class. Yeah. What do you mean? We have a in great track shit. record of of uh indig- treating indigenous peoples. Yeah. Uh. But yeah, as as I was saying, the only people who I can find who believe in Slenderman are adults in Slenderman's book. Uh yeah. not Slenderman's, Nick Redman's, which Nick Redman might be Slenderman given how much he sucks his dick. <laughs> um He's 80% so, Slendercom. He is at least eighty percent, uh, more than the jar was of that one. More weird dude's than cum. the jar, I can. I saw the image. That would more than the he jar. He got farther. Yeah, he got farther. Um, ultimately, Slenderman is just a ghost story, right? That's it. 
There's nothing else. Yeah. Its face resembles a skeleton, which invokes a fear of death. His lanky shape places him in the Uncanny Valley. The vague stories can be applied to normal fears and experiences. It is simultaneously relatable and uncanny, which piques the interest of teens and adults alike. Regardless, Slender Man, copyrighted by Eric Knudsen, although the current holder is in question because of a bunch of weird shit that happened in a terrible Slender Man movie that came out. Um, <laughs> it's a cultural phenomena that has spawned countless media, including ARGs like Marble Hornets, games, and as I mentioned before, a fucking terrible movie. So bad that I heard apparently that um, the dudes from Last Podcast on the Left actually walked out of the theater what which they never do for horror movies it was that bad wow um and a distressing number of cosplays like we're talking uh joker levels uh-huh. in terms of number joker and harley quinn levels of in terms of like how many people address this Slend- slender man yeah um and they basically act the same too and actually there is a whole nother thing there too because there was a dude who dressed up as slender man who uh along with his girlfriend went on a killing spree um but they also dressed as as the Joker and Harley Quinn together, so like uh, they're bad people, probably. Yeah. Um. Well, I mean, not probably. They killed people. They're bad people. Yeah. Never mind. I take that back. Whatever. Um. I think they died in a Walmart of all places. Huh. Yeah. What a way to go. <laughs> I mean, whatever. Uh. So, however, to me, the most value contribution uh, to the existence of Slenderman is an account from Kimberly Rackley as reproduced in Nick Redfern's book. Mm-hmm. Now, Brandon, this is the end of the episode. Okay. Um, I'm just going to read this bit, and then we're going to do show notes and all that good stuff. Cool. But uh, or okay, here's the question: Do you want to read this sight unseen, not knowing anything <clears throat> about it, or should I read it? Um, you can read it because I'm a bad reader. <laughs> Fair enough. I have to take special classes. So, had an experience last night slash morning, and I want to point out that this is uh, Nick Redfern supposedly talking to her on face. This woman on Facebook. Okay. Had an experience last night slash morning. A little drained this morning. Freaked me out. I was woken by what seemed like thousands of voices that were excited and upset. I sometimes hear the astral plane at night, but this was crazy. I need to make it stop, so I lift into the astral, and the, all these entities are everywhere in an agitated state. I ask what's wrong, and they all circle me. And then, this being, very tall and slender, in a black suit, but with a long coat, comes straight for me. The entities circling me close in tighter. They are trying to protect me, but he pushes them away with a flick of his hand, and I'm suddenly back in my body. There in, there in my room was the man. He had the same non-aura energy, like men in black. He pointed at me in the place of my wrist where the previous men in black always placed a chip in me started burning. Then I passed out. I felt electric inside. I'm going to jump out of my skin and I'm nauseated, kind of frightened. I look like death. Being a medium, I am not fearful of the supernatural or unearthly. But there is one thing that has filled me with terror since I was a child, and that is the men in black. I've told the story of my repetitive men in black encounters before, but it suffers repeating because I believe it is significant to the most recent encounter. The two men come to me, usually appearing through my bedroom window. My normal men in black resemble ninjas or soldiers. Oh, cool. (laughs) Always in black skin-tight clothing or fatigue uniforms. And always with the aura of intense panic. They will point at me and say, no, Kya, not yet. I have no idea why they call me Kya. (laughs) (laughs) Is it too much to hope for that they have not, that they have me confused with someone else? They also have no inkling of, I also have no inkling of what not yet signifies. They then pull up a holographic ball, which they show me, in which they show, where they show me, I will be taken away and put in this metal room underground. The room has a single chair and surrounding me is a bluish force field. Sounds like a fi- science fiction movie, right? Then they point at my right mit- wrist and a chip appears under my skin. They vanish, leave me always in full panic mode. I know you're wondering about the chip. I have yet to discover its purpose. But each, on each occasion that they place the chip, I immediately remove it. Alien or dimensional implants are more common than you might imagine and can be detected when you're in the theta state. These implants have an etheric vibration, which means they can be removed ethereally as well. For, luckily for me, I am a theta facilitator. The fuck is a theta state? <laughs> I don't know. But that's probably the, the most amazing part of this whole story. Oh. 
So Brandon, that's that's Slenderman. There's there's a lot more I could talk about in terms of the moral panic and all that shit, but like that's been done to death, uh-huh. right? Um, there's a documentary about the Waukesha murders. There's a bunch of stuff. Like it's out there if you care. Honestly, most of it doesn't is like it's just a moral panic, right? Um, it it's always the same bullshit. It follows the same trend, all that shit. Uh, but but Slenderman's not real people. And no. most of the kids don't believe Slenderman's real either. Like, to them, he's like a boogeyman at worst. But that doesn't mean they believe in him. Because, like, thinking back, Brandon, did you actually believe in any boogeyman? Because, like, I was afraid of them, but I don't think I actually believed that they were literally real. Yeah, I don't think like, I ever genuinely believed any of them were real. There, I definitely did that thing where, like, you try to get yourself in the state where you could get like spooked easier and like sought that out intentionally, but I never believed things were real. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, but like the other thing too, as a kid, like nothing's really real yet. If you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Right. Like it, it it's hard. Cause like kids, the way kids view reality is not the way adults view reality, but adults have this bad habit of thinking that, kids view reality as adults despite the fact that their brains aren't fully developed yeah which is um a problem (laughs) to say the least yeah but uh yeah so that's all i got for this week's episode brandon um ended up being a little quicker because we had a lot of pictures yeah pictures help nothing wrong with pictures um so uh in general uh, our website is com. Our Instagram is at CryptopediaCast. And our Twitter for now, assuming it doesn't fall apart in the next 24 hours or so, um, because it probably will, <laughs> uh, is at CryptopediaCast. Our email is CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast. We do have a Patreon. And Brandon, will you thank our jackalopes for us this week? Yes, thank you very much to Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Lenwood Sharp, Matthew Smith, Bushcraft Kelso, and Will Smith. Wicca, wicca. Wicca, wicca. Um, so if you enjoy the podcast, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff. You know, it helps, I think, maybe. I don't know. I haven't seen any hard, concrete evidence one way or the other, but it makes me feel good. So... You could do that. <laughs> um, if you have any monster requests or stories, be sure to send them in. I think this is my last episode for the year, and I think the next one's your last episode for the year, right? Oh, gonna... for the year. Oh, Wait. wow. Well, hang on. Wait, math. Wait a second. Wait. All right, open uh... the calendar. Calendar Yeah, because the 18th is when we record the next... We're going to record the next one on the 18th, so yep. the 19th. Oh, look at yep. that. Yeah, so our next one is our last episode of the year. Oh, um, Wow. Yeah, and uh, since the the next recording session after that is on the first, we might take a break, a, a bye week, just to because it's the uh, New Year's Day. So yeah, it'll be holiday in, in the holidays. We'll take a we're gonna take a bye week after the the next one, and then we'll we'll hit the ground running. I guess hell yeah. Um, so Brandon, what do you guys say? You can follow me on Instagram at donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerb.com, which I still. I need to have time to make it look like a, a real website again because it still looks and like not Heinz Canada. No, and not like another food brand that I made. <coughs> oh yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Me. The because you were doing. Yeah, I remember. Now. Yeah, uh, my email is Brandon at cryptopediacast.com. My Twitter is uh, at crypto Brandon or at Heinz Canada. I should probably start using that again. I, I've been a little quiet on that. I feel like it, I'm probably more than safe now. Um, yeah, you're, you're like, like, honestly, you're completely safe at this point. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. Like, I mean, you've seen what Kanye's posted. So like, and he hasn't been banned. Yeah. As long as you're not, as long as you're not like making fun of, uh, Elon Musk, you're generally fine. No, I really just make fun of other people's food opinions and like get aggressive about mayonnaise. That's fair. Yeah. Um, on Instagram, I'm at Mew2057. My at Mew2057. I'll say it like a human being. Uh, my Twitter is at JF Dunham. My website is johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at cryptopediacast.com. Our art was done by Tom Hill. You could find him on Instagram at Thomas Michael Hill. His website is greatergloryco.com. And his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. I'm 
I was about to say I'm Brandon. <laughs> I would I would have been on it. I would have gone with an I'm John. <laughs> I'm John. I'm Brandon. And please don't make any cum jars. Don't don't make any or do. No, please don't. Please. Please. Get the Cryptopedia Funko Pop. Make a, fu- a cum jar. No. Oh, no. I would hate that. <laughs> I would hate... I, I, we don't have a Funko Pop, obviously, which I would hate in its own right, but that's a whole other thing. Because um, really, at the end of the day, what would our... Our Funko Pop would just be probably just Bigfoot, right? Like, that would be the one we'd probably do. It'd but be then that's like, the three of us and then Bigfoot. Bigfoot, and then you could like... If you saved the containers after you got all three of them, they would unfold into a couch for them to sit on to. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Yeah. And the the, the containers can also hold your cum. They they are uh, waterproof. Hydrophobic. Are... I wouldn't say waterproof. I'd say cum proof. Yes. Water just moves right through them. <laughs> cum? Cum holds. See, the thing that uh. disturbs me about the cum jar... Is it how brown it was? And with that, things have gotten sufficiently weird for the episode to end. Because <laughs> I want to say that's like ultraviolet UV, like causes it to. I wouldn't know, but I, f- I feel like it would, which means it would be near a window. 